Yes, I'm having a new haircut. Yes, I'm dressing properly, but that is not the point of today. Today, I'll be talking about ECAA. Hi guys, this is Chaplin. If you don't know me before, I got into the University of Chicago for Odyssey 2, and I also got into Cambridge, which is the, which is the re why I'm talking about this test today. And on this platform, I'll be sharing um, life vlog, um, college content, and whatever reflection you name it if you're interested go ahead and check my videos and please subscribe that would mean a lot to me and will give me support to make future videos so let's start the real thing today i'll be dividing my videos into two parts the first i'll be introducing what exactly is the structure of ecaa and then i will talk about how to prepare for the actual test ECAA is a short name for economics admissions assessment um it is it's divided into two parts the first part is mathematics so mathematics there are 14 multiple choice 20 multiple choice are in math and 20 are in advanced math and the other part is called writing which is basically giving you an article as well as a prompt and asking you to write a full economic analysis essay in 60 minutes so that's very much for the introduction now let's move on to how to actually prepare for the test so for the math section i have three suggestions first is to go to the um Cambridge Economics website and to read the specification. I'll put the URL down below. Um, actually, on the specification, you can see exactly what content uh, is ECAA testing you on. Read the specification thoroughly and make sure you're understanding each point um, at a really detailed scale so that on exam day, you won't need to like slow down the pace to think about something else. And one of the suggestions I have for AP and IB students is to use your A-level students for help. So definitely when I was reading the advanced math part, there are some things that I wasn't really sure about or when I was actually doing some questions, I will be slowed down because I don't really understand some of the concepts and sometimes it will be really upsetting to learn things by yourself because if you don't really understand, you know, the textbook of um, A-level and you don't really know how to find an answer. But when you have an A-level student, ask them for help. It will usually take them about like half a minute or one minute to answer a question because it was just like super easy for them. The second tips I have is after you read through the specification and make sure that you understand everything, do the past exam papers. It is also on the official website of Cambridge Economics, all the past papers, and try to time yourself when you're actually doing them. Because there are actually really limited resources on the website, you really need to make full use of each paper. And trust me, it won't be the same at the second time you're actually doing the paper, so make sure that yourself is under testing condition and under that kind of stress when you're doing the past papers. The reason I really recommend you to time yourself is because I believe that ECAA math section is a really intensive part. When I was actually on the exam day and I actually did a, I won't say a lot, but I would say uh, abundant, that's the word, abundant um, past papers as well as other exercises, I still failed to finish on the exam date. On the last minute when the teacher told us to put down a pencil and I put down a pencil and I look up, uh, I was on the last row, everyone was still writing. At least for economics, I believe. So it is really an intensive part. So make sure that you can write as fast as possible as well as retaining uh, your high accuracy. So the third suggestion I have is that after you finish all the past exam papers, if you're still a little bit stressful, you don't know what to do, you feel like you're not prepared enough, of course, find out their exam papers. So a few exam papers that I have suggested are MAT, NSAA, TMUA, A-level math, and AM past papers. You can try to find them on website or ask your A-level students for help. Feel free to ask your A-level friends for help. They might have some really good websites. I should probably warn you guys before you actually do it. Um, trust me, the papers that I'm suggesting here should be at least very much different from the actual ECAA math. Some of them are like harder and some of them should be easier. But what I'm asking here is try to make yourself as fast as possible when answering math questions under time stress. And this is what you're actually aiming for when you're doing those questions. I do believe that um, practicing MAT will help me to like increase my um, speed of answering questions, because, but MAT is like really harder. And before we went on to the writing section, I really want to suggest that again, which is to practice as much as possible and to understand how you will perform under stress because that might be really different from when you're actually like testing on your desk or something else or I don't know. Practice makes perfect. Okay, so now let's move on to writing section. I believe that writing section is actually a lot harder than um, math because for a lot of the AP and IB students, not IB, but for at least AP students, we don't have essay 
but we're actually learning our uh, official, uh, standardized courses um, and we don't really know how to write an essay. So let me give you a full guide of how to prepare for this essay. So the first suggestion I have will decrease 50% of your workload, which is to only study macroeconomics concepts because for UK um, undergraduate course syllabus, as well as you can see it from the past exam essay papers, they're all testing on macroeconomics. So supply side policy um, this, um, and demand side policy, fiscal and monetary, basically. It's really restrained to a few macroeconomic concepts and you really don't need to like review the micro if you don't have time. So use all the textbooks, um, resources available to you, A-level textbooks, IB textbooks, trying to make sure that you understand them at a level that you can explain it at a really detailed scale in paragraphs. Th this is really different from our past, um, our past thinking. Let, let me give you an example. So in the past, when you're actually explaining monetary policy, you'll probably explain it like this. Because there's a decrease in federal funds rate, it will shift the money supply curve to the right, so decrease the interest rate as well as increase the money supply, um, the money in the market. But in the ECA test, you need to explain it in the paragraph and explain every single step. So you should explain it like this. Because there's a decrease in federal funds rate, it will be cheaper for fund, uh, for banks to lend each other money. As a result, there will be increase in willingness to pay as well as willingness to buy. This will increase overall money in the market, thus shifting the money supply curve to the right and decrease interest rate. This is, um, and then I'll give an example about evaluation. So you can see the difference here. Um, and after you review all of the concepts in macroeconomics, you should extend your macroeconomics knowledge which is some outside information that you should have known from maybe um, magazines like the times or the economist i strongly recommend you guys to read the economist because the past articles of uh, eca are all from the economist so you know reading that as it gives you i guess gets you familiar with the actual article that you're going to read on the exam day maybe just an article one day will be enough you just need to reach the place where if you actually read a piece of news you will be understanding that okay maybe um i heard about dead okay maybe i can talk about us maybe i can talk about greece and what are the actual um, situation of those countries that would be actually really enough just show themselves that you are actually a little bit knowledgeable than the uh you know normal normal level high school students well i actually look really i actually look really british today <laughs> and then you should move on to understanding the actual flow of the essay. This is really important because most of the people do not understand the actual flow of the essay for ECAA. So actually, I don't think ECAA is asking for a really complex structure of the essay. It just should have an intro analysis and evaluation. For the intro part, you should talk about the situation of um, the art that the article is talking about, as well as the definition of the keywords in prompt, and then put your thesis statement at the end of the first paragraph. For the next two paragraphs, you should talk about the analysis of the situation situation, maybe divide it from demand side, supply side, or different categories that you should talk about in the first paragraph and put your analysis. And for each paragraph of analysis, the normal, the classical structure should be a topic sentence, an explanation, an example, and then evaluation, which is basically like under what situation will your explanation analysis fail or what are the, some other situations that might be unexpected. And maybe after two or three paragraphs of analysis, you should have your final evaluation, which is by providing analysis of the, your mentioned analysis and then giving the audience a final solution or final recommendation of the overall policy. And in between the analysis, you should be incorporating diagrams and you know, relate the diagrams with your, with your actual analysis to show that you have a really thorough economic analysis skill. After understanding the flow of the essay, I would say just practice, practice, practice. By practice, I mean two parts. First, you need to practice your quick thinking skills. When you're actually reading the essay and when you're actually reading the article as well as the prompt, your head should start you know, making notes as well as thinking about how you should structure your essay and what are the analysis that you're going to write. And the second um, thing that you should practice yourself is the speed of your writing because you only have 60 minutes and what you're showing is that you have a thorough analysis, economic analysis skill. However, 60 minutes is not enough for you to read an article as well as present a full economic analysis. So what you can do is to write as much as possible. The more you write, the more detailed your essay will be and the more skilled you might be able to demonstrate to the actual grader, if that makes sense. So yeah, practice your writing speed. Last recommendation I have when you finish all the papers, you can also try to read The Economist and you know try to come up with some kind of prompt or question that you might think about and you can um, write a full essay to kind of answer the prompt that you have in mind. This is kind of helpful and not helpful uh, because obviously it's not the actual prompt and article that the official 
site is giving, but it is very similar because they are having essays, uh, they are having articles from The Economist, and basically they're having prompts on just a few my macro concepts. So I believe that by that way of practicing, you can actually practice your speed of writing as well as your quick thinking. So that's very much of my sharing today, and if you have any future questions, feel free to comment down below or DM me. Also, if you have any other questions about Cambridge application, please feel free to DM me or ask me to make videos on those content. And on the next video, I'll be showing you guys how I prepare for the Cambridge Economics interview and how my experience was, except for the things I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about. So that's very much for today. I'll see you the next time.